So I've talked before about the mindset shifts that you need to make when you're moving from being an employee to being self-employed freelance running your own business. And there are significant shifts. And one of the ways you need to shift your thinking is around how much you charge for your work or how much you pay yourself for the work you do. It's not as simple as people sometimes think. And there are several hidden costs that people moving from employed work to self-employed work don't often think to factor in. And also a lot of customers don't realize are there. So let's say you have a regular job where you are employed. So you get a paycheck every month. And from that, and if your wage is hourly, your contract or whatever, you can sometimes work out what your hourly rate is, what your daily rate is, basically how much you earn for being around and working the job. And let's say that you're entry level, you earn about 60, 70 pounds a day. So when your paycheck comes, of course, the, the tax comes off the top, that before you see it. So that's not too much of an issue. Then you go, well, okay, I'm paid 70 pounds a day for doing my job as an employed person. So therefore I should aim to make 70 pounds when I'm working self-employed. Problem with that is you're not comparing like to like. When you're employed, you get certain benefits such as, for example, sick pay and holiday pay. So actually, if you factor those in, you would your total benefits package is going to be closer to 100. So sick pay, holiday pay are massive in there. If you think about how many weeks holiday you need to have statute, statutorily a year, that's I think it's somewhere around two weeks in the UK. It's been a long time since I've had to take that much holiday. Usually my, the holiday I've accrued is pro rata, so I'm not that familiar with these things. But you need to factor that in to how much you charge, because as a self-employed person, you're going to have to pay your own holiday and sick pay. Otherwise, you end up being trapped trapped in having to work even when you really don't feel up to it even when you're sick and sometimes when you want to take a holiday you may not be able to because financial situations happen and your business in your business you shouldn't feel the need to choose between having a holiday and earning enough to live that month as a trap you can quickly and easily fall into if you're not careful. So those, those are the two major ones, sick, day, sick pay and holiday pay. You need to be setting aside some money out of the money that you earn to be able to pay for when you, to be able to pay yourself when you go on holiday. So that when you take two weeks off over the summer holidays or two weeks over Christmas, you don't have to take a 50% pay cut those months and somehow still manage to pay the rent, the mortgage, the utility bills. The other thing you need to be thinking about, the other big hidden cost is the amount of risk that an outdoor leader has in their cash flow. So this this year, 2023, June was an awful month for weather-wise. It was just a whole lot of rain. And some of the rain-sensitive events got cancelled. I had four events of my own cancelled, which for me, that's, that's significant. That was somewhere in the region of £600 less that month. And there's, there's other things. So if you're running sessions with customers, 
direct to customers, so like if you're working for a school with families, there may well be times where you just have a run of bad luck. Where four out of the five people that have booked onto your session call in sick. And sometimes, or they just won't book for that activity, depending on your booking platform and how you work your refund policy and everything else. You may not get, you may only get one person's worth of earnings that day. You may only get paid for one person and suddenly you, you're being hit by a pay cut. So your pricing needs to take into account that sometimes you won't have, you won't be fully booked. In fact, if you're fully booked all the time, you are doing really well and you are the exception, not the rule. Everyone has experiences fluctuations up and down. The difference between working as one person or two people in a small company and working as a big business is a big business can offset a lot of those risks by um, by concentrating them. So if they make a little bit less in this area, they can make a little bit more in that area and it averages out and they do well out of that. But as small businesses, we need to make sure we are ensuring our own risk. We are taking steps and we are making sure that the pricing is set in such a way that even if we have a bad month, we can still make a living. And those, those are big pitfalls. So I'd say, first of all, make sure that you are working holiday and sick pay in. It is awful having to work if you are feeling terrible and just think about the kind of session that you are offering the people that you're working with. If you're not on your top game, you can't really give them the attention and the, the time that they deserve and the energy that they need to have. Make sure you are setting up your pricing structure for your business in a way that ensures for both bad times and good. You can't always rely on luck and sometimes luck will come back to bite you. With that, I'll say, I'll leave it there. Remember, make the most of every day and I will see you next time.